Hello, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo, and with me is Susan. Susan Bloom. I'm an anthropologist at the University of Notre Dame in Indiana in the United States. Tell us about the activity. So I'm teaching a class called the Anthropology of Childhood and Education, but in all my classes, I really try really hard to create a community, which I've worked on for years and years in person. So usually I have people doing a lot of movement and they move from group to group and everything is really fun and there's a lot of liveliness in the room. And now I'm teaching online. So how do I do that? So I decided to adapt one of the activities that I've done in the past and actually my planning worked pretty well but then on the fly I adapted it some more and it ended up pretty successfully. So it's something that I call a scavenger hunt or really a human scavenger hunt because they're not getting pieces of paper or foreign coins or something like that. They're finding people who fulfill certain categories. So it's a way of getting to know each other, a way of learning about the assets everybody brings to the class to maybe prime them a little bit about some of the subject matter because it's not all irrelevant. A lot of it is connected to the topic of the course. So I modify this depending on the class. Um, and I try to introduce anthropological sensibilities of valuing diversity and um, loving cultural differences and appreciating multilingualism without preaching all of that. So people get excited when they find somebody who fills that category. And sometimes my students are a little bit conservative and they might not have thought so much to really value all these things. So it's a gentle way of introducing this idea of diversity. So um, usually when I do it in person, I give people a piece of paper and they walk around the room with their pen. So in this case, I had a Google Doc and I did it the first day of class. It wasn't the very first activity, but it was maybe the second or third activity. And I told them it was going to be a kind of ice breaking thing, but I didn't want it to be boring like all the other ones that they do all the time. So I had them brainstorm about what would be a novel question that they might ask, that they want to know about their classmates. So I've seen a lot of Twitter and Facebook conversations like, what should we ask our students? And I decided I would ask my students, you know, what do you want to know? What would be interesting for you? And they brainstormed in the chat and there were like five questions such as, you know, what is your, um, what is your favorite music or something like that? And so I wasn't controlling it. I just said, okay, notice these questions. These are available for you. So then I sent them to breakout rooms in groups of four. I used the Zoom function of random breakout rooms. The rest of the semester, they're actually gonna be in permanent groups because they have teams. But for the beginning, I wanted them to get to interact with small groups of many people. And so I asked them to please ask their name, ask the question, and then try to fill in the squares on the Google Doc, which I will show you. But at first, I thought I would do it like I did it in person, which is each person would have their own copy of it and try to um, fill it in because that's what I was used to. And, but it ended up being very cumbersome because I hadn't really thought the details through. And so I ended up giving them all the same document and it was so much better. It was so much more fun because they could see that other people are filling in these squares and there are three people who can do this thing. And let me just show you um, what I have. I, I'm seeing this now because beforehand you just have to fill it in with one name, but now you were seeing all the people who fulfilled a thing, right? Um, yeah, so it was just really fun. So you can see it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've gotten more confident about sharing the screen on Zoom, having mm -hmm. done this now 
in March and April and now in August. So this was the anthropology of childhood and education. So you'll see that a lot of things have to do with childhood and education. So find someone who is a teacher. And some of this is because there are lots of reasons for a lot of these questions, but it's to get to know them, but also to see that students have so many superpowers and so many experiences and we can draw on that. So it isn't only me who knows things, it's the students who do too. So it's also kind of culturally relativistic because if people like social media, then they can be in a box. If they hate social media, they can be in a different box. And not, we're not saying one is good and one is bad. It's just there's room for everybody with every kind of position. So, um, so some of these activities you had pre-written, and then there were these other questions that they came up with that they could also answer, right? No, the, the one they answered was just oral at uh, the okay. beginning to get beginning. to know them. But that would be a great addition, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't want this to be the whole class period. This was right. just supposed to be kind of a quick, fun, lively, interesting activity, but having them generate questions, maybe at the end of the semester, I'll do it again and have them um, write the questions. I was also, I had another question. So when you put them in random breakout rooms of like four or five to fill in the, the Google Doc, did, they, did you then put them in another random breakout room to try to find more people? Yes, so okay. I, I did it two more times. So the class has 24 students and they were in groups of four. So they basically interacted with about half the class. And there were technical problems at the beginning because when I put them back in the second round of breakout rooms, Zoom put them in the same room. So it, it wasn't technologically flawless. <laughs> yeah, breakout rooms takes a little bit of practice and then sometimes things go wrong, but so if but they're patient with you. <laughs> I'm trying to model imperfection. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. All right, thank you very much, Susan. I'm gonna stop recording now. Do you wanna add anything else before I stop? Um, no, I, I think this was a fun and um, engaging activity and people enjoyed it and they learned it. something about each other. So I, I think I would do it again. Yeah, I love it. And I like that you have it in the Google Doc. So you can actually go back and remember things about students. This is one of the things I like about, the, obviously in class it's ephemeral, you lose it. If you do it orally, you lose it. But then if you have it written down, you can actually go back and say, oh, who was the student who had that? Or, you know, how many students do I have who, I don't know, have a parent who's a teacher or things like that mm -hmm. sort of allows you to also do that and refer to the activity itself because it's relevant to your course. So anyone can do it with categories that are relevant to their courses. Right. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording. Mm -hmm.